Okay, guys, welcome back again. So as you can see, I have a different controller right in front of me, and this is the Akai LPD-8, right? So Cubasis 3.3 also come with MIDI Learn. To enable that, you need to go into settings, MIDI, and enable MIDI Learn. And then go in and tap on presets. The reason why I do this is because <clears throat> If you're working in a project and then you map things to the controller, right? Then that's automatically going to be saved, right? So then at least you can recall that anytime you want. Because if you don't create a preset and then you go and map things up, you can't recall those pres those uh, mappings you did. So anyway, let's go in and create a preset. I'm going to call it... Test. <clears throat> I'm going to call it test one, right? So now... After you created a preset, tap on learn, and everything that is MIDI mappable becomes green in Cubasis 3. So let's go in and do some MIDI learn. So if you tap on a on a parameter you want to uh, map, it becomes red as you can see. So then you move the fader and then it learns. You move the fader and then it learns. You can also map uh, VS um, instruments and effects in Cubasis. So for example, we can Learn, map this to this, map this to this. That is the instrument, and then for the effect, let's close this. You can go in, map the range with this, and map the threshold with this, right? So once that is done, you can now exit. By the way, almost all the instruments and VSTs, and almost all the built-in instruments and um, effects in Cubasis 3 are MIDI mappable. So anyway, once if you tap on exit, that's saved. So we can go in, for example, now, right, and create a different preset. Let's call it my test. Let's give it two. Right. And with this one, what I'm going to do is, so learn. Instead of mapping the first two, I'm going to map the last two with the same controller. So this and this, right? And now I can tap on exit. So now obviously, as you can see, it only works with these two. And the first two tracks are not being controlled by these two uh, by these two knobs. But if I go back now and then choose presets, double tap on the test one. If I bring up the, mi the mixer, as you can see, the first two knobs are um, the first two knobs are controlling the first two tracks. And obviously, the same thing with the channel strip. I don't remember which. Oh, there you go. It's working. And the instrument should be working as it should. There you go. So that is for the built-in instruments in Cubasis, right? So Cubasis 3.3 also works, uh, MIDI Learn also works with AUV3 instruments. To do that, same thing. Just enable MIDI Learn. That's it. Close it. Load your instruments you want to um, use. In this case, Drumbo. And Drumbo makes it really easy for you to MIDI map things, right? So anything, for example, let's go in now and add a filter, okay? For you to MIDI map that in Cubasis in uh, Drum Boy, you need to do is tap on this icon right here, and everything that is MIDI mappable becomes blue. So you can tap on that, it becomes orange, and then you assign it to the free. So anything that is free, any, any parameter uh, knob that is free, obviously it gets assigned to that. You can assign the free knobs to that. So as you can see, the last two are free. I can assign this to that and assign this one to this. What you can do now, obviously, once that is done, so is this this one and then this one, yeah? So when you finish uh, mapping the things and you finish um, creating your project in Drumbo, you can just go on now and go save as, give it a name, whatever name you want to save it, right? And if I go in now and open a different project, right? And come back and open that project. So open, what was it? If I move these knobs, as you can, oh man, the battery is going. <laughs> if I move these knobs, as you can see, it is working, right? So we have additional options for MIDI Learn. If we go into, first things first, let's go in again, create a new preset, and I'm going to call this, um, okay, just okay, right? So let me get rid of this. Obviously, um, in this section, you can obviously delete whatever configuration you're not using currently. You can rename, you can share. And then the most, I'll show you, I'll get to the 
to the um, apply ports in a second. So now what we're going to do is go in, learn, right, and then map this to CC5, map this to CC6, right, and map this to CC7. So five, six, seven. Okay, let's go into the channel strip, map these values, the range, with CC3, and let's map this one with CC4. Now let's go into the inst an instrument, map the wave, the oscillator's wave with CC1, and then map the course with CC2. Okay. So this brings me to the fact that I have two controllers right in front of me. And as you can see, I did not use the nano controller. So now if I go into the nano controller and move fades, as you can see, nothing moves, nothing moves, nothing moves, right? Now, what I can do is go into settings, preset, choose the preset, and go to apply to ports. So choose this option right here. Is that recording? Just a second here. <laughs> So preset and then apply to ports. So if you tap on that, this is the LPD8 I use for the mapping configuration. And I want to transfer whatever CC value mapped on this to the nano core, to the cog nano controller. So now I just need to choose the nano controller and tap on apply. Okay. So on a nano controller, it goes from CC1, CC2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So we mapped um, the first track to CC5. Now, as you can see, even if I move this knob right here, nothing moves in there because it has been transferred, right? Even though it's still connected, it's like it's, it's getting the MIDI information from this one instead, right? Cubasis is getting the MIDI information from this one. So that's CC5 over here. So I should go one, two, three, four, and five. And as you can see, that moves the fader now in Cubasis, right? So six, and that move. And seven, if I didn't map it, then that moves. So if you go into the the instrument, so CC1 should move the wave, as you can see. CC2 should move the course. And if we go into the channel strip, let's close this down a second. So one, two, CC3 moves the range and CC4 moves the threshold. So that's really easy. The only thing you need to remember is um, your CC values. Obviously, you need to know the CC values, right? That's all you need to remember, like of the controller you're using. So in this case, I know, because I was testing earlier, I know this is CC1. Uh, it starts from zero, CC0, one, two, three, and so on. And also, obviously, when you're mapping controllers in Cubasis, um, you can see the CC value, obviously. So in this case, I just, let me bring this up. You see, say CC7 over here, CC6. So as long as you know the CC values, you can know what, what knobs to move on the new controller. That's um, point number one. Point number two is, obviously, you can you can exit here. So if I tap on exit, now where this exit obviously gets out. We can also go in and learn, tap on reset. So that is going to reset to whatever I have currently mapped in this window. Right, so that's reset, and if I go in and move, things don't move. As you can see, nothing moves, nothing moves, right? Now, this brings me also to the next point, which is select selected track mode. So with selected track mode, if I tap on this fader and I map it with this knob, right? If I move, if I go on and select the next track to it, as you can see, it transfers this knob to that track. As you can see, I don't know if you see the CC value. So it says CC0 at the top. So if I move here, it goes to CC0. If I move there, CC0. So this knob is basically transferred across the tracks, right? What just happened? Did I move in and up? Okay. And uh, obviously, since uh, MIDI, since the catch-up mode is enabled, Obviously, when you move to the to a different track, Cubase's fader is not going to move or whatever parameter is not going to move until the knob catches up to it, then it moves. So let's move, let's change to this track. If I move the fader, 
until it's moved. So we can also go in, for example, here, and you, yep, mini map this controller. As you can see, this controller right here. So if I choose this track now, right, and I come back down, and it's not gonna move until I get to there before it starts moving. So yeah, uh, that's all, guys. Uh, catch you on the next one.